Everybody, Shelly here, and today I've got some of the new releases from Wet n Wild. These are limited edition. I just found them at my local CVS. I got very lucky to run into a nearly brand new display. I'm guessing these are limited edition like the Christmas time launch over the holidays, which means each store is only going to have a few of each item. My store had two of each of the eyeshadow palettes, two of each of the highlighters. There's one other color that I did not pick up, a purplish one. They had two of each of the kabuki brush, and that was it. And my guess is that's all you're going to find. So start stalking your local drug stores and see if you can get your hands on these. I'm going to, in this video, show you guys how I got this eye look. I'm also wearing a few other Wet n Wild products on my face. I will show you what I've got going on. And let's take a look at some swatches of these products. So the first eyeshadow is called Will You Marina Me? Get it? Marina, probably because of the blue here. So as these three color palettes tend to go with Wet n Wild, they give you a brow bone color, a crease color, and an eyelid color. These are all cruelty-free products from Wet n Wild. And so here are these swatches of Will You Marina Me? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This, this is the palette that I'm going to use for today's eye look. So if you would like to see how I got this look with this palette, stick around and that will be coming up next. Then we've got the Hieroglyphic Heart. And this is a sort of rosy slash, I'm gonna call it rosy slash copper. And we've got our usual little brushes that come in here and the three color shades. These palettes come with a foam brush and a brushy brush. You're not blending anything with that brush. It is so stiff. There's no way that's happening. But this is a very beautiful set of a, a I love these rosy colors for a crease. And you've got a dark shimmer brown for the lid and a sort of a golden shimmer for the brow bone. Now that's kind of a shimmery color, I would say. Go brow bone. It's, on me, it would not be bright enough to be a brow bone highlight, but I like to use these then as sort of transition shades, and that seems to work out pretty well. Last up, we've got the Heart and Heavy, which is a rose and plum sort of a, a dealio going on here. Again, we've got the three shades. The brow bone highlight in this case is bright enough, I think, to be a brow bone highlight, and I would use it as such. It's also got a little bit of shimmer to it. Then we've got the Mega Glow Highlighting Powders. Now, I only got this in the pink shade. This is called The Sweetest Bling, and here are swatches of the center and the outside and what it looks like all kind of swirled together and combined. So that is the three eyeshadow palettes that you can now get in this limited edition. The other sh highlighter is a sort of purple toned, but that's gonna be way too dark on me, so I did not pick it up even though I could have. And let's get into trying out these palettes and seeing how they work. I'm going to use the Will You Marina Me palette and I will show you how to get this eye look and I'll tell you what else is on my face from Went Wild. So here we go. Let's try these out. So you can see I've already got my complexion on for the record, I am wearing the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I mixed half and half of Rose Ivory and Shell Ivory, which Shell is the neutral one and Rose is the cool toned one. And they both work on me, but the Rose is just a teeny bit more pink than I like. So I thought maybe I would try mixing the two of them and I did and I like how it turned out. Mm -hmm. I'm also wearing, I have the Anastasia brow powder in granite, but I topped it with the Wet n Wild un Ultimate, Ultimate, Ultimate Brow Mascara. This is in their brunette shade. And this stuff holds, like, I mean, something about Mary type hold. Like, it is holds in place, which I like because I do like to brush the front of my brows up and they don't stay very well if I don't have a brow gel that holds very well. I 
love this one and I love the Anastasia clear brow gel and those are my go-to's but this one works really well if you're looking for something on a budget. I'm also wearing the Wet n Wild Color Ombre blush in the shade in a purple haze. So that's what I've got on my cheeks right now and that's about all I'm wearing right now. So let's get started on some eyeshadow. Now I'm going to set my primer. I did prime my eyes with the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly and I will use the Wet n Wild uh, single shadow here in creme brulee. It's a pretty much a skin tone match for me And I just use it to set whatever eye primer I've got going on and that way Nothing is sticky and everything will sort of blend out smoothly on top of that primer So this is something I do pretty much every time I apply eyeshadow and this is a really great eyeshadow single for this purpose I think they're 99 cents and it's perfect especially if you have fair skin it's not too dark, it's not going to add color to the overall look that you're doing, it's just good stuff. I really should have used my Wet n Wild eyeshadow primer, but I forgot about it, so oh well. Now, originally I was going to go in with Hard and Heavy because it kind of matches the shirt that I'm wearing, and it kind of matches my hair a little bit, but I can't take my eyes off of Will You Marina Me because this blue is just killing me, so... I think that is what we are going to use. So of course they give you two different brushes. You get the little foam tipped brush and then you get an actual brush brush. But this thing is so harsh I can't imagine doing anything but eyeliner with it. Like there's no way that thing's going to blend. So I usually just throw those away and that way they don't go falling out of my eyeshadow palette every time I open it. Now I think the way they have these spelled out, you're supposed to do the brow bone and then your crease and then the lid. And I think just for the sake of giving them a nice little test, I'm going to do what they say. So I've just got a fluffy blending brush. This is a Wayne Goss. I love this brush set. This is number three. Number three is like a, a bigger sort of blend it out fluffy brush. And actually, I think I'm going to go in with the smaller one because... This is a pretty dark crease color, so I'm going to use number four. Also my Wayne Goss, it's just a fluffy crease brush. So I'm going to tap in very lightly at first, just because I don't know how pigmented these are going to be. These are nicely pigmented. I would say tapping in gently is the way to go, just so you don't... I mean, you saw how barely little I got on my brush, and I've got some color laid down so yeah let's be gentle let's be very very gentle here i'm going to concentrate the color in the outer corner here i'm just going for a simple three color look like they've got going on like they are recommending i'm just gonna layer this up and this looks like it is layering up very easily which is good i would rather this because once you put down too much color you you there's no going back. It gets really hard to deal with. So I would rather have a shadow that I can tap in very lightly and build up as I go instead of having a ton of color put down. Like, see, just now I put more color on my brush that time and it kind of goes all ham on you and you got to be careful. So I would say go light, go with a light hand, light hand. You'll have a much easier time blending everything out. Of course, I'm a hooded eye person, so whenever I put color into my crease, I have to then open my eyes and look straight ahead because sometimes if my color's too far down, especially in, at the center point of my eye, it's completely hidden by my hood. And I usually want some of that color to show. So I actually go back in and I usually have to take a little bit of color slightly above my crease onto the hood of my eye so that when I'm looking straight forward, you can still see a little bit of color and that's just a tip for you hooded eye folks if you don't have to deal with hooded eyes you are so lucky it's one of those things like I think if I ever get any kind of cosmetic like procedure or Botox I don't know I'm going to do something that lifts <laughs> the hoods of my eyes because having hooded eyes is something that really it annoys me it actively bothers me and 
That's not saying I definitely will ever do anything like that, but if I do any sort of cosmetic procedure, it's gonna be about these hooded lids. But see how now when I look straight ahead, you can see some of the color from my crease? That's what I'm going for. Now I'm gonna take this lid color on a flat shadow brush. In this case, I've got the Wayne Goss 06. I'm gonna use that lid color, this pretty, pretty blue. Now my guess is this color will probably be pretty mild unless you wet your brush, but actually it's got a little bit more pigment than I was expecting dry. So right now I'm putting it on dry. I just wanna see how it lays down and how pigmented it is. It's actually a very, it's not sheer at all. It's a light color, but it's not a sheer pigment at all. It's actually very nice. I really like the formula of Wet n Wild eyeshadows, especially this past few years. Maybe the past two years, I've been really liking what they've got going on. You really could just wear this like this. I'm going to do both eyes and then I'm going to go back and spray my brush with some setting spray and get this a little bit more. Let's, I just want to see what it does, how it behaves with some setting spray. I'm going to switch to my Real Techniques flat shader brush and I've got the Wet n Wild Photo Focus setting spray. So I'm just going to spray my brush. On my expensive shadows, I would dip into the shadow first and then spray the brush, but on my cheaper shadows, I usually spray the brush first so I can get some good pickup onto the brush. Ooh, yes. Oh yeah. It's just a more concentrated color if you spray some setting spray on there. So this side has setting spray and this side does not. But I like when you've got the option. I like when a shadow works well, both wet and dry. I'm gonna spray again. And drop the setting spray. Putting this on wet is almost bringing out a more green shift to the blue. It's very pretty. I'm gonna go back in with that brown crease color and a flat shader brush and just go for a little bit of an outer seven or an outer V. Give a little dimension to the side here. I'm getting quite a bit of fallout as you see here. But what's nice about this color is that over the blue, it's coming on really darker than it showed up in the crease, which is good because then you can like dual purpose it and use it as an outer V and a crease color. Just depends, you know, what kind of brush you're using to put it down, how you're blending it out. And it really does make a difference how you apply these shadows as to what they end up looking like on your eye, which I like. I like to have options. I like the flexibility. I like that you can get a complete look out of a single small palette like this and not have to bring in, you know, a darker outer V shade and lighter brow bone colors and all that. Just gonna go back in and blend. No additional product here. Next, I'm gonna take that fluffy brush and use the brow bone color. I'm actually gonna use this as more of a sort of transition shade. It's pretty dark for a brow bone color on me, so I'm just gonna go right above where my crease shade ends and sort of transition it with this sparkle. Now, if you've got hooded lids especially, there's always been this sort of saying like, oh, you don't want to use a sparkly color on your hood. It's going to accentuate it. And, you know, I don't find that to be true. Maybe on some people, but I've used, there's another shimmer. It's sort of a 
plum colored shimmer in the Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette that I always use as a transition shade and I don't think it makes my hood look prominent. I think it's beautiful. So, I mean, maybe it depends what colors you're talking about, but I don't really have that problem. And this is just kind of softening the edge and bringing a little bit of that gold into this look. I'm going to take just a little bit of the crease color and a pencil brush down under my lower lash line. I'm going to go put on some liner and mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, eyes are on. I also put on a lip. This is the new Liquid Cat Suit from Wet n Wild. It is in the shade Rebel Rose. I really like it. I like this a little bit better than their, what was the previous liquid lip? They still have it. The Mega Last, I think it is. The Mega Last goes on dry and dries down really, really quickly. And I feel like it's really messy to put on. These go on super smooth, nice and slick. They dry down quickly enough that you're not going to end up smearing it all over by overworking it, but they don't dry immediately. So you've got some time to get the shape that you're going for. So I'm really liking this new liquid cat suit formula. I really like this color too. It's a little bit, a little rosy, little nude, little not nude, little my lips but better, a little bit of color, a little bit of you know, you know, you know. I also picked up one of the highlighters. They had them both. There's a purplish shade and there's this pink shade in the sweetest bling. And I picked up the sweetest bling because that purple shade, I'm so pale that a purple highlighter is not going to look like a highlighter on me. It's just going to look ridiculous. So I only picked up this one, even though I could have gotten them both. So let's see how this guy applies. There's sort of a cream color in the center and a pinkish on the outside. I'm just going to grab them both indiscriminately. Oh, that's pretty. This does not really look chunky at all. It's pretty finely milled. I really like this. That is super pretty. It's definitely pink. You can definitely see the pink sheen to it. It's not a ba-bam, like glow to the gods kind of a highlight, but it's not super subtle either. It's definitely there. It's definitely noticeable and it's definitely pretty. They've really been knocking it out of the park with their highlighters lately. Mmm, like it, like it. I just noticed that I didn't put any mascara on my lower lashes. Gotta fix that. But. That's kind of what's up with Wet n Wild. The other thing that I picked up was this new little kabuki brush. They call this a kabuki makeup brush and it is just a short little stubby thing. I think I'm going to enjoy, oh, their brushes. If you haven't gotten any of these pink top brushes, they're so soft and they're vegan cruelty free, which is awesome. Oh, this is just so soft. I feel like this is going to be a very nice brush for setting foundation with powder, not necessarily applying powder foundation, but oh, this is, this is really soft, you guys. Like it, like it, didn't use it today because I totally forgot, but it is looking beautiful and travel friendly, nice and small. I like it. It's gonna look really cute sitting on my vanity. So that's what's up with the new Wet n Wild stuff at the drugstore. I'm, Loving it. I think the eyeshadows went on beautifully. I really like their formula. This is consistent with their recent uh, eyeshadow releases. The consistency in the formula is lovely. It's a really easy to make a nice look out of, you know, a three pan shadow palette. The colors are always very well coordinated and 
very nice and innovative and like this is a little bit louder of a look but the other two palettes are definitely very conventional type daytime appropriate looks i'm of course going to wear this during the day i don't follow those rules but i really like these products i'm really digging this shade of the liquid cat suit i'm digging the liquid cat suit formula i'm happy with this all around so there you have it that's what's new at the drugstore from wet and wild Go out and try to find yourselves that display. The display that I found, I'm guessing these are all limited edition. Well, they are all limited edition, but I'm guessing they're not going to be put into the main display. So you're probably only going to find these in your drugstore that has one of those, you know, areas where they put the little cardboard displays. And in my drugstore, they only had two of each eyeshadow palette they had two of each highlighter and they had two kabuki brushes and that was it so if this is anything like the christmas launch the sequins launch that i could never get my hands on anywhere and i stocked all of my drugstores for months if this is like that and every store is only going to get one of those limited edition sort of displays then it's going to be tough to get your hands on these so hopefully they will have them on their website i highly recommend this highlighter it's gorgeous I love these eyeshadow palettes. I always pick them up. I should have picked up backups of all of them because I really like these colors. They're very pretty. But get your hands on it if you can. I wish you all the luck in the world because I know it can be challenging. I just got really lucky this particular day. Thanks for stopping by, geeking out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time. Leave me some comments down below with anything you would like me to try out on my channel. I am here for you guys. And thanks again for hanging out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or night wherever you are and take care of each other. Bye-bye.